I, I try to remind people when I do lectures that, you know, people, people don't live in ghettos, right? People live in communities. Right? Now, there's a difference when you say that, right? There's kind of a, 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 there's a cognitive difference, right? People don't necessarily live in ghettos. People live in communities, right? Communities and cities. You could say, you know, people live in racially segregated communities, right? But this language of ghettos and ghettoization, I usually like to, so much of what we read uses the language of the, the ghetto, right? But ghettoization, I would encourage you to think, think of it as a process, right? Not necessarily a place, right? Although there are spatial characteristics to racial segregation, poverty, joblessness, political disempowerment, right? There is a spatial connotation to that, and that's very important. The spatial dynamic is important, right? The white noose around, right, the black neck, right? That real vivid kind of visceral image that Robert Self uses from a 1960s document to the, for the title of that chapter. But, you know, again, I, I want, we will use the language of ghetto, right, analytically, right? We'll use it kind of sociologically, but that's not licensed to kind of throw it around, right? Like as if it, you know, you, you, you cross into a particular neighborhood, like you cross into the south side of Chicago and like there's a sign that says like, welcome to the ghetto. <laughs> like <that's>, no, <laughs> you know, you cross 96th Street in New York, you know, welcome to the hood. It's not, you know, it's not like that. Right? Ghettos, ghettoization and ghettos are processes, right? They're not, you know, people don't, I would argue, people don't live in ghettos, people live in communities. Communities that are shaped by histories of ghettoization, 